other. <sighs> Hold on. Hi guys, welcome back to What Fuels a Dancer. My name is Leah and I am a professional ballet dancer and a certified nutrition health coach. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different and a little bit more casual. Um, I am going to be meal prepping today, so I thought I would bring you guys along. So we're just going to cook together and chat, and hopefully if you don't feel very confident in the kitchen, hopefully you can learn a few tips that will give you some more confidence when making your meals and snacks. So if you wanna see more of these types of videos, make sure to give it a thumbs up and comment down below and keep watching. All right guys, so welcome to my kitchen. So we are going to be making a few things today. We are going to be making some quinoa and some lentils and some roasted veggies. So my philosophy with meal prep is to make individual components that I can mix and match throughout the week, add different sauces to, season a little bit differently to make fast meals so that I'm also not eating the same thing over and over again. Of course, I sometimes make like a pesto pasta like I made last night, but um, the bulk of my meals do come from meal components that I just throw together, whether in a salad or a grain bowl or I make tacos. Just something that's really easy and quick and fast and I don't have to think about and it can also mean that I'm listening to what I want like if I want something that's a little bit more spicy um, or something more creamy um, I can listen to that and make a meal with the components that I've already made based on that so let's get started when I meal prep I usually make a few different types of grains I have several different types of protein and then some veggies that are prepared as well as as I have a lot of condiments and sauces to make sure that I'm eating a wide variety of foods and also um, to make sure that my taste buds and my stomach stay happy. So first I'm gonna start on the quinoa because it can just sit on the stove and I can forget about it. So I am using this quinoa from Trader Joe's. I like it because it's three different colors so it's pretty. That's basically the only reason why I chose this one. The important thing to remember about quinoa is you need to rinse it before you cook it or else it can have this bitter and slightly soapy taste to it. Um, so that's a really important step. Other than that, quinoa is very no spuss and it's high in protein, which is great for any dancer, but especially if you um, prefer more meatless options. Um, and fun fact, quinoa is actually a seed and not a grain. Huh, the more you know. Quinoa is also high in fiber and B vitamins as well as it has some other vitamins and minerals in it. So it's, it's a powerhouse. And also with quinoa, if you make too much, you can um, put it in a container and stick it in the freezer for a night when you don't really have time to make a grain from scratch and so it's really easy really great so I just have a strainer like this and you will see me rinse out the quinoa really quick all right so the quinoa is rinsed and I'm just going to dump it in a pot and for quinoa you want to use one part grain to two parts liquid so I'm just gonna be using water but you can use um, vegetable broth chicken broth whatever you feel like and one last thing before I start cooking it I'm just gonna add a very healthy pinch of salt um, it's really important when you are cooking grains to add salt it's going to add flavor so if you ever um, make oatmeal in the morning and you're like oh this tastes really bland try adding a little bit more salt and that might help it taste better um, so I'm just gonna be adding a healthy pinch a little bit more. All right. That is ready, so I am going to turn the burner on high, and then once it starts really bubbling away, then I'm going to turn it to medium low-ish and just let it simmer with a lid on. Next, I am going to make some brown lentils. Lentils are really great because um, you can 
make them in a variety of different ways and add them to different dishes. So I sometimes will add more like chipotle seasoning with cumin and garlic powder, paprika, chili powder, and that gives it more of kind of like a taco meat flavor or uh, you can add it to a spaghetti, kind of like a lentil bolognese. There's really so much that you can do with it. I also add it to salads, so it's a great meatless option um, and it's also really cheap, so that's good. <laughs> And these are also something where if I make too much and I know I'm not gonna eat all of it, then I will freeze some and save it for later. So lentils are a great source of protein and they also have fiber, iron, folate, and B vitamins. So they are a really great choice. And so I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with quinoa. I'm going to rinse it and then add it to a saucepan. All right. So those are going to go in a saucepan and we're gonna just put them on the stove and leave them. And with lentils, I also like to do one part lentils to two parts of a liquid. So again, you can use broth or water. And just like the quinoa, make sure to salt them as well. That's going to make sure that they have a lot of flavor and just kind of give them a base so that you can then add other seasonings to it as you desire. Also, I forgot to say, if you don't feel super confident with your cooking, know that it takes time and practice and that it's it can be as easy or as hard as you want it to be. Um, so start with small steps and mistakes in the kitchen are totally normal and it's all about building your confidence and it's it ends up being something for me that's really therapeutic and a way that I know that I'm taking care of my body and listening to what it needs. So as you can see, the um, quinoa is bubbling away. So I'm gonna turn the heat down just a little bit so it's not so hot. So we're gonna take it down to like a medium low. All right, next I'm gonna roast some veggies. So I'm gonna do a tray of sweet potato and I'm gonna spice it with a little bit of chili powder and garlic powder and salt. And then I'm also going to roast some cauliflower. Um, so those are two veggies that are pretty hearty and are really great to add in a lot of different dishes. Um, when roasting veggies, there's not an exact science to it. They're pretty forgiving, which is really great as long as you don't just like forget them in the oven. I usually put my oven around like 400, 410-ish range and I make sure to switch the racks in the middle um, of their cooking time so that they can completely cook on the inside, but also develop that crispness on the outside, which is what you want with roast veggies. So these are my sweet potatoes. Um, I am not a huge fan of sweet potato skins, so I am going to peel them. Um, you don't have to do this, um, but make sure whether you peel them or don't peel them, that you give them a really good wash in the sink and kind of scrub them a little bit with your hands to make sure that there's not any dirt on them because tasting dirt while you're eating your food isn't necessarily the most palatable thing. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm making them into just like little bite-sized pieces. So it's about the size of like my thumb. Also, if cooking is something that you don't necessarily love and that you kind of see as a chore, make it fun. So watch your favorite TV show, listen to some music or a podcast, call a friend. Something that has been super fun for me is to be making something in the kitchen while I'm talking to one of my friends who's also cooking their dinner. So it kind of feels like you are cooking it together even if you are miles apart or, you know, given the current circumstances, you can't necessarily congregate in kitchens yet. So make it fun. Uh, it's something like your body needs to eat. And so if you make it kind of like a part of your self care, for me, it becomes more fun. So just a little tip. All right, so another little tip with roasted veggies is you wanna make sure that they are in one layer and not stacked on top of each other, otherwise they'll steam rather than get those crispy edges. And another tip is to make sure that you add like olive oil or canola oil or whatever oil you are using to roast them in. If you just put them in dry, 
I find that they don't have a very good texture. So make sure you oil them and season them and that they are in one line like this. So I just kind of drizzle a little bit of olive oil and then I'm just going to use my hands to massage them to make sure that all sides are coated and that all of the individual pieces are coated as well. So to season them, I'm using this chili powder and I'm also using some garlic powder and salt. All right, and then next I'm going to roast some cauliflower. So I'm gonna cut it up into bite-sized pieces again, like the sweet potato. I'm going to drizzle some olive oil and salt and a little bit of sriracha on it to make them a little bit of like spicy cauliflower bites. And then I'll put them in the oven. All right, so here's the cauliflower and I'm gonna put it in the oven with the sweet potatoes. And I'm gonna set the timer for about 20 minutes and then check on them when that goes off. All right, so while everything is cooking, I'm also going to share a few tips about how you can spice up your meals really easily and quickly. And that is through having some things in your fridge that you can always go to or things in your pantry that you can always go to if you wanna add something new to your meals. So almost always I have a huge bag of greens in my refrigerator that I can just quickly throw Throw in to add into some meals for some slight crunch and some like fresh flavor. Also greens are just really good for you. I also almost always have some sort of herbs. So right now I have some cilantro and parsley and basil. I always like to keep some green onions on hand as well to just sprinkle on top of my lunches or dinners. I also like to have citrus, so squeezing some lemon or lime on top of my food or even just putting it in my water just to add some variation. I keep some nuts and seeds on hand, so things like sesame seeds, almonds, cashews, walnuts that you can quickly roast and chop up and add some crunch to your meals is really delicious. And then I also like to have sauces, so things like tahini, soy sauce, uh, what else? Sriracha is a huge one in our household. You can also have like ketchup and mustard and things like that to just quickly add to a salad dressing or to a sandwich or a bowl, whatever it may be. And then I also like to have some sort of briny component. So these are things like olives and capers, jarred artichokes, pickles, sauerkraut, those sort of things add a whole other layer of flavor to your foods. And so those are all things that I can just quickly grab and throw on top of my food to add different layers of flavor and also they're good for you. So that's awesome. <laughs> Sometimes I'll also just like drizzle a little bit of olive oil on top of a salad or my meal. I also have some avocados. Avocados are really great as well. Also dried fruit is really great. So I have some dried cherries and some dried figs right now that uh, I might add some dried cherries to like a quinoa salad or I might chop up some dried figs and put them in a different salad. They're just really great at adding a different texture as well as a sweet component. Um, and they're just super yummy and tasty. So one of my favorite sauces is taking tahini, which is um, sesame seed butter, basically. And it has a really, it's, it has like an earthy flavor to it, which I really enjoy. And I will mix it with some uh, salt and lemon juice and that is super yummy to just drizzle on everything so that is a staple for us to have all right so the quinoa is done um you can see that there's no water left and it's pretty fluffy so i am going to turn that burner off and i'm just going to let it sit and cool quite a bit um, so if you put it away right now, the grains will stick together and get really, um, like, goopy, I guess.
All right, guys, so that is it. Thank you so much for joining me today in my kitchen. I hope that you enjoyed cooking with me. And if you want more of these videos and more tips in the kitchen, I would love to make more videos about this. So leave a comment down below if that interests you. As always, follow me on Facebook and Instagram at What Feels Dancer. And I will see you guys all next Wednesday in a new video. Bye, guys.